Microsoft Excel is an everyday software used by millions of people around the world. But people often think Excel is not all that powerful. In this video, let me show you 10 things that you thought Excel couldn't do, but it does them so well. Let's jump in. 10 things you thought Excel couldn't do. The first one is time series forecasting. People think you need sophisticated programming skills or some special tools to do the forecasting. But Excel can do this quite easily with just a couple of clicks. Here I got my coffee sales for the first two weeks of November 2021. If I insert a line chart from it, you can see that we follow a weekly pattern where on the weekdays from Monday through Friday, we get highly num high number of coffees sold. And then in the weekends, they kind of plummet and then they pick up again. So how do I use this information to predict my sales for the next week following that pattern? You can simply select the data, go to the data ribbon and click on forecast sheet option. This will see what is happening to your data and it will try to predict. You can use the options here to tell Excel that the seasonality is not to be detected automatically but it is manually set to seven days. Notice that as soon as I set it to seven, Excel did a better job of forecasting. I can also tell Excel how long I want this forecast for. So let's forecast it until the end of next week. So here is my forecast and I can create this. All the calculations will be done by Excel and it will create a nice little graph along with the numbers as well. You can go and examine these formulas to tweak the calculation or leave it as a as at that point to use this forecast for upcoming presentation. The second is a data entry form. While Excel can do data entry forms, many people think you need programming skills like VBA to be able to set up a form in Excel. Do you know that Excel comes with a native feature to enter data automatically into the spreadsheet using a form? It is called forms. I'll show you how it works and then I'll tell you how to set this up. If you click on the form on a table, it will show you the fields of the table. So for example, for my visitor entry log, the fields are name, phone number, purpose and in time. And I can click on this. I can just type my information. So for example, John visited with that phone number to meet HR manager at 11.15 AM. And then when you click on new, it will add that information there. Of course, right now what it did is it replaced the current record, but I can actually add another information. So we will add Chandu, 123, 123, 1234. And when you click on new, it will add a record for that onto the table. You can also use this form to find the people or delete any records as well. How do you activate this? Because if you go to any of the ribbons, you don't see that special, special button anywhere on the screen. This is actually a feature that is in Excel, but it is kind of hidden very well. All you have to do is you can go to either customize the quick access toolbar or right click and customize the ribbon either place. So we will go to the customize the ribbon place. And from here, you will see there's popular commands. All we have to do is commands not in the ribbon. So here, just scroll down until you find the form button. And then you can add it to any of the main tabs or you can even add it to the quick access toolbar because I have already added it to my quick access toolbar. I'm just going to add it to my home ribbon. And when you click OK within the home ribbon, I'll now have a form button. This can be activated whenever you have a table form of data. The third one is printing partial portions. This is a tongue twister too. <laughs> Whenever we try to print a spreadsheet, you will see all of the data in the spreadsheet is being printed. But what if you just want to print the coffee sales alone? You don't want to print anything else. How do you deal with this? Again, you might think you need something special to do this, but Excel can do this with a very, very simple feature. Select the range which you want to print. So in this case, you want to print just this bit. So I'm going to select that. Go to page layout, print area and then set print area. This will tell Excel that this is the only portion that you want to print. Now, if you go to file print, you'll see that only that bit is being printed. 
But when you go back to the sheet, you will still see all of your data. The fourth one is something new added to Excel. You can get live stock quotes, Bitcoin quotes or currency trade prices right inside Excel with a simple click. Just type the stock code that you want. So for example, if you want to know how much is the Microsoft share trading at, type the symbol code MSFT and then select that, go to data ribbon and from the data types, click and highlight the stocks data type because the code that we typed is a stock. We now want Excel to treat this thing as a stock. It will show a couple of disclaimers about the financial information, etc. And finally, Microsoft Excel will search for this particular symbol code. And then it says, I found all of these codes. Which one do you want? Because Microsoft stock is being traded in multiple exchanges, it will ask you to pick one of them. I'm going to pick the NASDAQ one and then select it. And it will add the special code. So the actual code is XNAS colon MSFT. Now that we have treated this as a stock code, I can use the data types feature of Excel. So I'm saying within the C3, I have got the symbol. What is the price? And this will get you the latest price. Let's see how to get the Bitcoin price. Just type the code BTC USD, which is basically Bitcoin to US dollar exchange rate and press enter. And if not already mapped, map it as a stock. And then now I can just use this dot price to see that Bitcoin is currently trading at $58,977.64 with respect to USD as of recording this video. If you know anything about Bitcoin, the price might be way higher or way lower than that by the time you watch this video. The fifth one is reversing a formula. We all know how to use formulas in Excel. So here I'm building a simple coffee business model. If I sell 800 cups at $4.50 per cup, my total sales will be $3,600. But what if I want the reverse? I want to know how many cups should I sell if I want to make, let's say $5,000 of sales. This is what a reversing the formula is. You don't have to try all the combinations. You can ask Excel to try the combinations and tell you what cup sold will get you that value. All you have to do is select the cell, go to data from what if analysis, click on goal seek. You can use goal seek to set a cell to a value. So for example, this is the D8 cell. We would like to set this to 5,000 by changing cups sold. When you click OK, Excel will try different combinations and then tell you that if you sell 1,111 cups, you will make $5,000 sales. You might think, ah, this is not impressive, but it gets seriously impressive with complicated things. So for example, here I have built a coffee profit model where I got cups sold, price per cup, cost per cup, and daily fixed costs based on which I have calculated my profitability as 39%. Now let's say we would like to take up the profitability to 50% and I want to know how many cups should I be selling to get to 50% profit. Just set the cell to 0.5 which is 50% by changing my cups sold. Excel will try different combinations and then tell you that if you were to sell 2,394 cups, you'll make 50% profit. Do you know that Excel can actually show emojis both in formulas as well as in charts? So for example, here I'm printing an emoji of a smiley or kind of like a tired crying emoji if the targets are not met. This is a very, very simple thing. I'm going to show it from scratch. If my sales are greater than target, which is let's just say 800 cups per day, then I want to print a smiley symbol because smiley is kind of like text. We will have to open the double quotes and then press windows and dot key. This will open up the emoji keypad from which you can pick the emoji, close the thing and then again windows and dot, pick the other symbol, close it. And when you drag this down, you now have a formula that is returning an emoji. How cool is that? Now let's take it up one more level. Eh? Here is my coffee sales trend graph with the emoji printed right on top of the value on the line chart. And you can see that, for example, on 4th November, we didn't meet the targets. And of course, in the weekend too, we didn't meet the 800 target. The emojis, when they are printed in the cell, they look like in this black and white color. But when you print them in the text boxes or on the charts, they look colorful just like the way they look on your mobile phone. Here is some mixed up text that has my 
text value and number values all combined together and i just want to extract the number portion so for example here i want 8.73 here i want i want 8.76 4.54 7.52 4 like that Again, you don't need anything complicated to do this. Excel can do it natively. All you have to do is type the first few and let Excel figure out the pattern and it will do rest of the job for you. So I'm going to type the first two, three values, 7.8, 8.73, And you can see that Excel is already trying to predict something, but not correctly. So we'll try a few more, 4.54. To trigger the results, type the first few values and click Control E. This will trigger the flash fill feature of Excel, which is a rule based engine built into it. And it will see what you have done and then follow the pattern to get you rest of the results. So it has done a beautiful job of extracting all the numbers for me. You can use this for any number of things where the data is all mixed up and you want to extract a portion based on certain pattern. You can learn more about flash fill from the data ribbon flash fill option here. Imagine you need to create a map chart do you know that you can use excel to make such things let me demonstrate that just select the countries and the column with which you want to make the map so for example population in this case and go to insert and click on map filled map this will generate a nice map chart for you filling the country's geography with the color based on how high the population is so for example for this set of data germany is the one that has highest population and maybe something like Portugal or one of these other countries have lower population values. You can even change this and map it by, for example, urban population. If we want to target urban people for our coffee shop chain, then maybe going to Belgium or Netherlands is a better choice because there's a lot more people living in urban areas there than let's say in Germany or France. You might think Excel is only for working on a computer or a laptop. Do you know that you can actually open and read and modify and work on Excel files on the web? That means you can use them on your phone as well as tablet. Well, here I built our coffee business model with a nice little graph that shows our profitability. And I want to share it with our business partner. I can click on the share button on my Excel. You require a OneDrive link in order to be able to do this. I already have OneDrive and I'm logged into that and I've now shared it and I'm just gonna open that in my browser. So here is my PC Excel file and now I'm viewing this in my browser here. Notice what happens if I change. You can actually see that as I click on the cell, here it is telling me that CD, which is <laughs> Chandu, is editing this on the web. So for example, I want to change this to 900. As soon as I put 900 here, not only this graph updates on this page, but it also updates my original Excel file because they're all linked together and it calculates everything else nicely. All of this is really cool. So you don't have to think about, you know, if I email this file to my boss, she's traveling and she can't open it. No, you can send it and they can just view it and change things on the web version of Excel and then it will reflect back here. They can even add some comments and notes as well. Everything works beautifully. Last but not least is most of us think Excel has a physical limitation of 1 million rows. If you go all the way down, you can see that the last row that you can have in Excel is 1,048,576. It automatically means you can't have more than a million rows of data in Excel for analysis. But do you know that Excel actually can analyze data that is beyond a million rows? I'm going to show you a powerful trick using which you can bring in large volumes of data for analysis purposes. Of course, it will probably slow down Excel a little bit, but you don't really need anything sophisticated to analyze such large volumes of data. Excel will do. For the purpose of this exercise, I've got a sample file here. It is a CSV file that has 3 million rows of data. If I try to open it in Excel, I'll get this nice little message. This data set is too large for Excel grid. If you save the workbook, you will lose the data that wasn't loaded. So it will open up here. But if I try to save it, because there's more than a million rows, it will just not save the rest of it. How do I analyze it? Well, instead of opening it in Excel like this, you can go to the data option. And from here, there is Power Query through which I can load up the data. So I'm going to try this from text csv and point to my big data file and import it so this will 
show me a preview of the data and instead of loading because when I try to load again I'll have the 1 million row limitation I'll just say load to and load it to Excel's data model as a connection so I don't want any physical table I want this data to go into Excel's internal memory data model so now all your 3 million rows are going to the Excel state model because the file is large it's going to take a while okay it's done how do we see the 3 million rows now that they are loaded to the data model I can insert a pivot table from the data model remember that that file has six columns each column with 3 million random numbers so I just want to see maybe their totals and averages so here from sample file I'll pick column A column B column C for some we'll move it like this I'm just gonna add it again this time I'll just change this to average so I can see what is the average of the column A and then repeat that process for other columns if I need it if you want you can also change the nature of the calculations using the power pivot DAX language the best part of all of this is you can make a pivot table from the data sets that is more than 1 million rows. How cool is that? Oh well, I'm all out of coffee. I better go and make another cup. Meanwhile, check out my video on top 10 Excel copy paste tricks. You will be surprised for sure. I will show you a magical trick using which you can make another cup of coffee with Excel. I'll see you there. Bye.